you guys flickers of fear time once again my little movie review series so martyrs from 2008 this was i kind of feel like this is one of those movies obviously whose reputation <laughs> precedes it unquestionably and i kind of always felt like it was something that i probably should watch you know being a big horror nerd like i am but I have to say that up until this point, like every time that I went to kind of place it on the review schedule, it's like, oh, I'll do it next week or whatever. Um, I would always kind of end up chickening out and like watch something that was less, I guess, like notorious maybe. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've watched plenty of fucked up movies. Uh, and for the most part, they don't generally bother me as much as probably they should, to be honest with you. But... Martyrs kind of seems like one of those movies that turns up on pretty much everybody's list of most disturbing films ever. And for a long time, I guess like when it came time to like review it, I was just never really in the mood to sit through it. So I was kind of change it out for something else. Now, I did manage to, I don't know how I managed to do this, but in preparation, I guess, like for the unknown future day when I would eventually sit down and watch it, because I knew that I would at some point, I did manage to not really read much of anything about it, just like for all these years, so the plot wouldn't be spoiled for me. And actually, now that I've watched it, I'm actually glad I really, I, I'm actually really glad that I did that because one of the best things about the movie, in my opinion, is how it kept like constantly blindsiding me and went in directions that I wasn't really expecting it to go. So anyway, obviously, since I'm doing this video, uh, you can surmise that yes, I finally did settle in and watch the thing. And uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I get it now. <laughs> I mean, this movie, and like I said, I've seen some fucked up shit. And I don't even know if this is, if I'd call this the most fucked up movie I've ever seen, but it's definitely one of the most nihilistic movies I've ever seen and one of the hardest to sit through. Um, I don't think I'd call it gory in the way that something like The Sadness or, you know, Terrifier 2 or something like that is gory. It's not like that, but it's certainly brutal. Like, and the brutality I feel like is largely a product of the realism and just the unrelenting nature of its violence. And I kind of feel like I even watched, like after I watched it, I watched some other horror channels, like reviews of it. And even the most hardened horror fans were like, man, that's kind of messed up. You know what I mean? So this one's kind of messed up. Uh, it's kind of expert level. If you're just a casual horror fan, I don't really know if this is really something you want to be watching, but you know what I mean. Um, I'm actually glad I watched it, but I don't imagine that I would ever be in the mood to sit through it again, which in some ways is kind of like the highest praise that you can give to a horror movie because it did the job that it set out to do, right? I mean, it horrified me. It disgusted me. It revolted me. It put me in a dark mental place. So, you know, kudos, I guess. So to talk about this movie to any kind of like depth at all, I'm gonna have to spoil what happens in it. And like I said, I would recommend if you are gonna watch this, I mean, I can't, like I said, just across the board recommend it because this is very much like if you're super into horror, yeah, I can recommend it then. But if you're just a casual fan, probably you don't wanna like, you don't wanna go there because um, it's not a pleasant experience. It's not a fun time. It's not an entertaining horror movie. You know what I mean? I, but I do feel like if you are gonna watch it, it's better going into it, not knowing where it's going. You know what I mean? So uh, this is your final spoiler warning warning, I'm going to tell you like pretty much all the shit that happens in the movie. So Martyrs, which was written and directed by Pascal Logier, uh, and he admits that he was at a very dark place in his life when he uh, wrote and directed this movie, and it shows. Um, and I, But I feel like this movie often gets lumped in with the, you know, the new French extremity movement, but... I don't know. I feel like uh, Pascal Lagier really didn't like that term, and I kind of feel like he was trying to do something else with it, because this movie does actually have a deeper philosophical bent to it that somewhat justifies its really kind of, like, fucked up, like, disturbing visuals. Now, I'm not going to say that doesn't make them any easier to stomach, because there's a point to it, but I do kind of feel like there is a point to it. It's not just fucked up shit for the sake of being fucked up shit. You know, the savagery in this is near constant and it's like just very very realistic so it's kind of like sickening in that way but it's all for a purpose like i said you never really get the sense that this movie is just showing you messed up things 
for the sake of titillation or entertainment or thrills or anything like that. It's showing these you these images like specifically to disturb you and make you uncomfortable. And it really does succeed in doing that very, very well. So at the beginning of the film, I believe it's 1971, and there's a young girl named Lucy who has been held prisoner and, you know, sadistically tortured for about a year, I think they specify. So at the very beginning of the movie, she actually escapes from captivity and kind of just runs screaming into the streets. So the authorities take her to an orphanage uh, where, you know, unsurprisingly, she has kind of a hard time overcoming her trauma from this year of abuse that she underwent. There is one other girl at the orphanage, known, though, named Anna, who actually befriends Lucy and takes care of her, like, in a very motherly, you know, best friend kind of way. And she kind of slowly becomes Lucy's, I don't know if I'd say, like, she's her only lifeline, but she's, like, her closest friend, her, you know, the only girl that she actually ever confides in or anything. So because of these two girls' real close friendship, the police actually ask Anna to relay any information that Lucy might have shared with her about the person or the people that abused her, because obviously they want to catch these monsters, but Anna will only tell them, it's like, oh, Lucy doesn't really remember anything like about the experience. She wouldn't be able to identify them anyway because it was always so dark. We also learn that Lucy is seemingly being tormented by some kind of demonic looking woman who may or may not be real. So the story then skips ahead 15 years. And we're introduced then to this kind of upper middle class family, the Belfons. Uh, they kind of seem about as average a family as you're ever likely to see. Like at the beginning, like you meet them, the mom, Gabrielle, is kind of like out like fixing the water pump or whatever. There's like a dead mouse in it. Uh, the dad, who I don't think is ever named, is making breakfast for everybody. Uh, the teenage son and the daughter, who looks like she's maybe about 11 or 12, they're kind of like squabbling back and forth like siblings do. So it all seems very, very ordinary, but after as you're watching it, you're kind of like, you can't help but be on edge a little bit because you're like, who are these people and what do they have to do with the young girl that we saw escaping from captivity at the beginning of the movie? Well, just hang in there because you're going to find out soon enough. <laughs> So not too long into this, you know, just a very average domesticity kind of like situation, the doorbell rings. And when Mr. Belfond goes to answer it, Lucy, who's obviously 15 years older, is standing on the doorstep uh, aiming a shotgun at him. And uh, really, he doesn't get a chance to say much of anything before she very coldly just blows him the fuck away. Lucy then comes into the house and proceeds to slaughter the whole entire family, even the kids, uh, though she does seem to feel a little bit bad about it, but it's almost kind of like she's operating like she doesn't have a choice, you know what I mean? So after perpetrating this horrifying, horrifying massacre, which is, like I said, very realistic and very disturbing to watch, Lucy calls Anna on the phone. Now, Anna has supposedly been waiting in a parking lot nearby, and she clearly was not quite prepared for what Lucy did. What you find out is that Lucy had suspected that the Belfons, the couple, were the people who had tortured her as a child. And although the plan was, ostensibly, that she was just going to go to this house to make absolutely sure that it was them before taking revenge. By the way, she had actually tracked them down through, like, there was a newspaper article about the daughters, I think it was like a swimming championship or something like that, and it had a photo of the whole family and she recognized them, so that's how she knew, like, where they were, like, how she tracked them down. But once she got to the house, she said she told Anna that she was certain that that's once she saw them, she knew that that's who it was. So she then just proceeded to wipe them all off the face of the earth. Now, keep in mind that this shit happens. All of this happens like within like the first third of the movie. And so as events are unfolding, I kind of found myself simultaneously intrigued by, but also kind of dreading like what was gonna happen next. This is one of those movies where it's like, you just kind of sit there with a knot in your stomach the whole time because you're not really sure what's gonna happen. So Anna like comes to the house and starts to help Lucy get rid of the bodies. We also see that this demonic woman uh, who has apparently been plaguing Lucy since childhood is still with her. 
And we now have come to understand that this woman is actually just a manifestation of Lucy's guilt and her former trauma, and she only exists inside Lucy's head. Like, nobody else can see her, obviously. Um, but to Lucy, though, she's very real, and she has actually killed the Belfons in order to appease this woman, though she's kind of, like, confused as to why the woman is still around and is still, like, tormenting her, even though, supposedly, all of the abusers are dead. So Lucy and Anna, while they're kind of like trying to clean up the scene or whatever, they kind of run into something of a snag. While Anna is dragging the bodies out into the yard, she discovers that the mom, Gabrielle, is still just very, very barely alive. Now, Anna decides that she's going to help this woman because, you know, probably deep down, she doesn't condone what Lucy did. And I kind of feel like she may not even entirely believe Lucy that these were indeed the people who tortured her. And the movie kind of like plays with the audience in this way too, because Lucy is presented as not really the most stable person. Like I said, understandably, given her history. And we're kind of also doubting, it's like maybe these weren't the right people. Like maybe she got it wrong. Like maybe she was just mistaken or maybe she's completely delusional. We don't really know. But you're kind of led to believe that maybe Anna's thinking along those lines too. Too, and that's why she decides, well, I'm going to try and like at least save this one woman because the other three are already dead. Now, Lucy, though, catches Anna trying to help the dying woman, Gabrielle, and she basically gets really mad. Like she accuses Anna of not having her back. She's like, you don't believe me, just like the doctors didn't believe me. And then she proceeds to bash in Gab uh, Gabrielle's skull repeatedly with a hammer. And uh, yeah, I, I was really wincing watching that shit. Like I said, it's very, very realistic. It's very, very difficult to watch. So yikes. Uh, so now the alleged abusers are really all dead. And Lucy kind of has a moment like with her demonic counterpart person, ghost, whatever. Uh, she's kind of like hugging her. But then the demon woman kind of like slices open both of her arms, like long ways, like all the way down, which again is very difficult to watch and starts like bashing her head repeatedly into the wall. Now, when we see ev this events, these events occurring like through Anna's eyes, we can see that obviously Lucy is doing all these things to herself. Now, it's actually made clear through a flashback that happens like right around this time period that the demon woman that Lucy has been seeing all these years was actually another victim of the torturers from back then. So, so when Lucy escaped their clutches, she saw this woman chained to the wall and the woman was like, you know, looking at her like, hey, please help me. But Lucy was like, nope, I'm out. And she just like left her there. And so like all of these years later, I mean, she was just a kid. What are you going to do? Um, all these years later, like she still feels guilty that she left that woman there. So this, uh, you know, the spirit of this woman or like a manifestation of this woman has been like haunting her like all this time. So Lucy then crashes right out the house, like through a window and stands in the yard and slices her own throat open. So that's right. The person that you thought was like the main character of the movie is now dead. And it's only about halfway through. What the actual fuck you may be asking yourself. Well, strap in because if this thing was difficult to watch before, now it's going to jump right into like the next level of fucked up -edness. Like, so, you know, here we go. Now, so while I'm sitting there watching this movie, wondering what the hell is going on and contemplating whether or not like the Belfons actually were the tormentors that Lucy suspected them of being, because I was like, how's this going to go? Is she going to find out that, oh, it wasn't really them and like all this other kind of stuff. So while all of that was going on, Anna actually discovers a secret passage in the Belfons home, which leads down to a big, huge kitted out basement. Uh, and it has all kind of like really upsetting photos like mounted on the wall, like their beautiful artwork. There's all kind of like weird medical equipment and rooms and stuff. Oh, and also there's a cell where a naked woman is chained to the wall who, by the way, is also sporting this kind of metal device of some kind that goes kind of like over the top of her head and like around her eyes, like kind of blocking her vision. And did I also mention that this contraption is also nailed to this woman's skull? Yay. So Anna, obviously horrified, realizes that Lucy was right about the Belfons all along. They were these abusers and they're doing it to other people too. Uh, so now you as the viewer start to feel, hey, maybe not so bad that Lucy just came in and like blew them all the fuck away. I mean, killing the kids was still kind of fucked up because they might not have known, but you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you don't, you don't feel bad about her like blowing the way, blowing away the mom and dad. So Anna actually tries to help the woman by freeing her from her chains and like 
putting her in a bath, which obviously probably really hurts a lot because she's all covered with cuts and stuff. Oh, and she also, like, takes the screwdriver and, like, pries the metal thing <laughs> out of her head. <laughs> it was, like, it's really, really hard to watch. I was, like, watching this one other review of it where, like, a guy and his wife were watching it. And they had, like, just audio. They couldn't show any of the scenes, obviously, because YouTube would, you know, demonetize it or whatever. But um, they just had it kind of blurred out. And then they had, like, their audio reactions to it. And they're just all, like, screaming and going, ah! You know what I mean? It was, like, so, so funny. But it's, like, just the sounds they made. So that's kind of what I did, too. I was, like, oh, Jesus Christ. So, yeah. Uh, the, the thing when she pries it off, also, I guess it's been on her face so long that it's also, like, fused to her face, like, to the flesh, so it's always got, it's very gooey. Oh my god, it's like, it's, it's horrifying. So, the woman, I mean, is freaking the fuck out, like I said, understandably, like, I don't know how long she's been in there. Um, and at one point, she kind of, like, runs off into the house, she finds a knife, and starts to saw one of her own hands off, so... And that also looks super, super realistic. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> it's horrifying. It's a horrifying movie. Now, in the midst of this woman's episode, if you want to call it that, uh, a completely shocking event occurs. I was not prepared for this by any stretch of the imagination. This random woman who we haven't seen up till now strolls into the house through the front door and just blows that woman away. Just blam. Just shoots her and kills her. Just fucking calm as you please. And for a second, you're thinking, okay, who the fuck are these people? Like, are these the authorities? Did somebody call the police? Like, is Anna saved is all, you know. And then I'm just kind of like, you find out later. Sadly, the answers to those questions are no, no, and absolutely not. Because it turns out that these people who have just arrived, because behind the woman that shot the hysterical woman... Uh, are a bunch more people who just stream in like they own the place and they're just kind of like oh yeah well we've been calling the Belfons and they didn't answer so we figured there was some there was something going on over here so we thought we'd come check it out so they come in so it turns out that these people are essentially members of like a cult of which I don't know if I yeah I guess you'd call it a cult kind of and the Belfons were actually enthusiastic devotees of the, of said cult so these people who are all like kind of look upper middle class or wealthy, they seem like mostly middle aged or elderly. They have spent their whole mission. They've spent years and years seeking a true martyr, not in the sense of somebody dying for their religious beliefs, which I feel like is the more common uh, definition nowadays, but in kind of the original simpler, um, you know, definition of like a witness, you know what I mean? They are convinced that if you put someone through enough pain and torture, then that person will eventually like transcend life, like transcend their body and be able to see what lies on the other side of the veil, as it were. So the leader of this cult, who is only ever called Mademoiselle, who's like an older lady, she shows Anna, because of course they, Anna's in here, so they chain her to the wall too. And they're like, hey, check this out. So they have like this fucking photo book of shit that they show her. So they have all these photos of still living people who had endured the most just unimaginable agony, but they had this like particular look in their eyes that suggested that they had kind of borne witness to what lay beyond death. They had like transcended, you know. So because these cult people are just obsessed with knowing what happens after you die, They've been torturing young girls and women for years, including Lucy when she was little. They're looking for a true martyr that will be able to endure all of this pain and just be able to tell them in no uncertain terms what will be in store for them like after death. And they do say at some point that they've had like three or four uh, girls that did actually transcend, but weren't, they weren't able to like tell them what they saw. You know what I mean? But uh, so, as you can probably guess, because they found Anna here in the Belfont's house, they figure, hey, here's our next test subject. We don't even ho have to go out and kidnap everybody. It's, you know, it's kind of like DoorDash, but for torture victims. So yeah, uh, the final third of the movie is just Anna as she is repeatedly just beaten and abused over and over and over and over and over again. It goes on for a very long time and it is very, very agonizing to watch. Uh, but again, like I said, that's kind of the point of it. Like the audience is essentially being put into the same position as the victim is being 
kind of brutalized past the breaking point for the sake of like a higher purpose. So the movie is kind of like meta that way. Now some undetermined period of time later, when Anna has just been so beaten down and abused, that the cultists are just like certain that she's gonna transcend at any time now, they tell her there's only one more step to go, like your suffering will soon be at an end. Now, can you guess what this final step is? Go ahead, guess. <laughs> oh my God. So uh, if you guessed, gee, I bet those cultists are gonna strap Anna into this big metal frame contraption and flay all the skin off her body while she's still alive then you get a cookie because that's what happens. Uh, they do leave the skin on her face though. So, you know, that was thoughtful of them. So after this horrific event, oh, and can I say too that I just really wanna give props to the astonishingly, astonishingly realistic and very, very grotesque special effects work here. I mean, some of the best that I've ever seen. It was actually done by a guy named uh, Benoit Lestang who actually sadly uh, committed suicide like before this, movie came out, which is pretty fucked up. So yeah, so after this whole skin flaying incident, one of the cultists goes down to give Anna some food and she sees the look in Anna's eyes and she screams. She like calls Mademoiselle and she's like, you guys need to get all of the other members of the cult here like yesterday because this girl has transcended like she, cause they can tell like by the look in their face, she's our first true martyr. And we do actually see some kind of like like transcendental imagery because they show things like from Anna's perspective, like as she's kind of like gazing out into the beyond or whatever. So all the cultists are super excited and they all like gather at the house. They're all dressed in their Sunday best and everything like it's a big fucking party. And uh, the, this guy who's like the second in command, I don't know if they ever said what his name was. So he tells all these people that Anna has indeed transcended and has actually been able, the first person that they've uh, had do this, she was actually able to share what she saw with Mademoiselle. Like she saw what she, you know, she, she told her what she saw, like beyond the beyond or whatever. Mademoiselle, in fact, uh, says the second in command guy, is like, she's gonna come out momentarily and tell all of you guys like what she said. Like we've all been waiting years to hear this. This is the culmination of all of their grim toil. Like all of those poor <laughs> children and girls and women that they tortured. This is this is what's this is what we've been wanting like all this time. So Mademoiselle though, she doesn't really seem to want to come out. Uh, so when her second in command lieutenant guy goes and like knocks on the door and is like, "Hey, what's up?" She asks him, "Can you really, really imagine what lies beyond death?" And the guy admits that he can't imagine it. And then Mademoiselle says to him through the door keep doubting, and she blows her own face off with a pistol. The end. That's the end. So obviously, uh, this ending can be, and has been, uh, interpreted in multiple ways. Because we, as the audience, are not privy to whatever Anna told Mademoiselle. Only she knows that. So could it be that there was nothing at all beyond death and Mademoiselle realized that her group had tortured and killed just countless people for no reason? Was there, in fact, a, a pure and beautiful afterlife that Anna did indeed see but that Mademoiselle and the other cultists would never attain because all of the evils they had perpetrated to learn that information. Uh, on the other hand, was the afterlife so awesome that Mademoiselle felt the need to get there right away and she thought she would fuck with the co-cultists' heads on the way out, or maybe she thought they would all kill themselves too, like to get there faster if she told them what was going on. Uh, the, also, the possibility is still there, too, that um, did Anna actually lie about what she saw as, like, a final fuck you to her captors, which, you know, that's possible also. I mean, I've read loads of different theories about what what the ending of this meant. And to be honest, I'm not really sure which one I subscribe to. I'm kind of leaning toward the explanation that Anna did unequivocally like see heaven or see like a beautiful afterlife, but then related to Mademoiselle that none of you motherfuckers are ever gonna get there because of what you did like to attain that knowledge, thereby making all of the shit that they did, I mean, not only evil, but also like ultimately pointless. So yeah, uh, Martyrs is a rough movie to watch for sure. Um, but I actually, 
weirdly found it kind of rewarding and because I guess because it was like so thought provoking, uh, you know, the experience was it's, you know, it, it, if if <laughs> the description of it tells you anything, it's obviously not for the faint of heart or the weak of stomach. And honestly, if you never feel the need to sit through it because you don't want the images from it or the ideas from it rattling around in your head, I absolutely would not blame you one bit. But as extreme art goes, it's actually pretty magnificent. And I'm going to say if you can persuade some like-minded friends to watch it with you, you can have all kind of fun discussions about what the ending meant. Like in between kind of like squinting your eyes and like looking at shit like through like this, just to give yourself a break from like the unrelenting like bleakness and cruelty of this movie. By the way, there was an American remake of Martyrs in 2015, uh, because of course there was, that's just and any kind of like foreign film that did any kind of business, they're going to do an American remake of it. But from what I've heard, the American version is substantially toned down from the original. And though I have not seen it, uh, it gets pretty dire reviews across the board. So I'm going to say like if the concept of the movie interests you, then just go ahead and watch the French one. Watch the original because uh, it's probably like a million times better. So have you seen Martyrs? What did you think about it? Do you not want to see it now? Now that I've told you what happens in it. <laughs> Or if you have seen it, what do you, what's your interpretation of the end? Because I'm interested in other people's theories about it. And that will do it for this Flickers of Fear. I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye. Push the head.